Hey guys, Tom here. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Today we're going to talk about Dolby Atmos and how to price out a budget Atmos setup for your studio. And I'm going to show you how I did it for my studio. So the first thing, I got a little spreadsheet here in Google Sheets. Uh, my upgrade is based around an Audient Aurea. So this is uh, the Sweetwater page for it. It was $26.99.99. This is build as an immersive audio interface and it's specifically set up for a studio like mine where I need 12 outputs for my Dolby Atmos 7.1.4 monitors without spending over 5,000 bucks. You know, I was I was looking at like an Avid Matrix or one of the, you know, the Avid um, or, you know, there's a couple other ones that are that are a little like Apollos and stuff that are priced a little higher. This is a new company. I really like the form factor of this. Uh, it's it's you know rack mounted and it's got the labels on the outputs and it's been awesome. It also comes with this uh, application that runs on your computer, which has calibration built into it. So you can actually let me see if I got the box here. They they send you a calibration mic, a sound ID reference calibration mic uh, with a serial number so you can get the microphone, the calibrated calibration file for the microphone, uh, and then it'll take you through the 45 minute calibration process, which is honestly kind of a pain in the ass, but it goes through, calibrates all your speakers, and then spits out a file that you import into this uh, Aurea application, and bam, your studio is corrected. However, I didn't like the sound of the correction, so I made my own that was a little less surgical, a little uh, little redneck correction, I call it. So it still has the delays on the speakers, it still has the EQ, but it's a little more tailored to, I know my room, I know what it sounds like, and I don't necessarily want it 100% corrected. So props to them for including the Sound ID reference microphone in like a trial. I also didn't want to pay the subscription fee. I already gave uh, 2,700 bucks to you guys for this interface. I don't want to pay another five or 600 for the um, Sound ID reference. So, so that's the, the, the heart of the upgrade. Uh, and then the big question is, okay, so I've got the interface and I have a 5.1 studio. If you're coming from stereo, do 5.1 for a couple years first and then go to Atmos. You really need to learn in not baby steps, but at least steps. Don't just take a huge leap into Atmos. Me, I've been mixing in 5.1 for 14 years. It's finally time for me to jump on the Atmos train. So if you look at the diagram here, you've got your left, center, right. And then for the surrounds in a 7.1 setup, you have two side channels and two rear channels. So a left side, a right side, a left rear, and a right rear. So what I did for those is I've already got JBL speakers. I've got 308s up front and I've got 305s for the left and right surround. So I just added a second pair of JBL LSR 305s. So all the surround speakers are the same make, model, and size. And that's really important to match. I didn't need eight inch speakers for surrounds. And, and you'll find that when you go to theaters, movie theaters, the surround speakers, even though there's arrays of them, they are smaller than the LCR. So I got two of those. Uh, it was a, sorry, this should be one because I got a pair of them. So that was $2.98 um, for the extra two speakers. Then I had to get the height channels, which you see here, these are the circles with the box around them. So they're over my head. And for those, I actually went with PreSonus Aris 3.5. They're very tiny monitors. They're powered. The reason I like them, you can see on the back here, you've got um, one speaker is kind of the boss of the other one. And so you run the power to this one, you run the audio to this one, and then you actually just take some speaker wire and run it from the daddy speaker to the baby speaker. So I like that because it was less cables to run. It's a little bit lighter of a load on my, um, they are rafter ties. So I have exposed rafter ties in my studio. I should probably just show this to you versus talking about it. So phone cam, there's the Aurea. Now up here, we've got a cloud. There's some boxes on the cloud that I need to deal with, but then the Aris monitors are there. So there's the, da there's the daddy, 
and there's the baby. And if I spin around to the back, you'll see a similar deal back here. There's the daddy and there's the baby. Back to the studio. So that's how I have mine set up and it was really easy. You know, it's just a speaker wire going from one to the other. So it's very easy to set up um, and hundred bucks for a pair easy. <laughs> that's super cheap. Like you couldn't get cheaper than that. So they're light, uh, you know, drilled brackets. I did have to um, make some brackets for them, but you, may, you might not have to do that. Just get them to where they're safe on your ceiling. Uh, and you really want the height channels about double the height of the rest of your channels. So then TRS cables, I just, you know, it's about a dollar per linear foot. So I needed about 80 feet total. So that's 80 bucks. So the total with the Aurea, 32.77.97 to upgrade to Atmos. Very reasonable. Another option is the Motu 16A. This is a 32 by 32 Thunderbolt uh, or USB 2.0 audio interface with AVB. I like Motu, like great company. I've uh, ran their interfaces for many years and look at the outputs on this thing. You know, you could go ham on this. Like you could go more than 7.1, you could do 9.1.4 or I think you could even do, I'm not great at math, but could you do 11? 1.4 that would be yeah that'd be 16 outputs so you could go all the way up to 11.1.4 on this and it's got analog inputs which unfortunately the Aurea does not it is it is firmly in the uh the you know just monitor controller slash audio interface not for tracking so it does actually have more outputs than I used um I just did the top front and top rear so the top mids I don't have those channels uh, at all but super easy to set up it also has a separate section for stereo outputs so that was my upgrade if you wanted to do the Motu instead it's quite a bit cheaper uh, about 1200 bucks cheaper so it would be 2072.98 for the 16a upgrade so for two grand to upgrade to Atmos or, you know, with the Oreo, which is a little bit uh, nicer, I think it's, you know, three grand and change. That to me is totally worth it. And it's really not that much as far as learning Atmos, still working on that. I'm pretty comfortable with it, but I'm going to be uh, doing some videos on that process, both mixing Atmos for music, but also more geared towards film, which is kind of my specialty. So yeah, that's the, that was my upgrade. And like I said, it really wasn't that expensive. Um, probably the hardest thing was just researching these interfaces. Um, I'm a big fan of the Audient Aurea. I think they made a fantastic device. Um, it sounds really good. The converters are super clean. The preamps are actually really good on it. So if you're doing stuff like you have to record some ADR or Foley or track a vocalist or record a guitar, great. You're not going to be recording a drum set or a band because it's got two preamps, but you know, you've probably got other stuff for that. So as kind of the brain of mixing in your studio, I think it's a really solid choice. The other kind of like dark horse option I was looking at, um, was just adding a second, you know, I had, I started with the Focusrite 18 I 20 and I, I could actually gang two of them together with ADAT. So that's the other thing you could maybe look into is just, um, you know, an 18 night 20. You'd need two of those because they don't have, I think they have six or eight. They might have 10 outputs if you actually use the headphone output as uh, a monitor pair. But yeah, you're not going to be okay. So it's got, it's got 10 outputs. And then you'd have to actually plug into the headphone outputs to do more than that. So this would be the, like the most affordable option, but the, the converters on it aren't as good as the Aurea. Um, and, uh, it doesn't have like the built in calibration, which is really, really nice. So, uh, like I said, Audient did a great job with that. And, um, I'm excited to keep using it. I've used it for a couple, like maybe a month now. And uh, it's been rock solid, no glitches, um, no weird noise. The only thing, the only gotcha with it is 
if you do use calibration in the app, in other words, if you use the calibration either that the uh, sound ID reference gives you or your own Redneck correction, the problem with this is anytime you're boosting like this boost here, you're gonna technically go over zero. So I talked with support and they said, you'll have to bring the, the volume down on the output, which kind of sucks. Um, but you know, as long as you calibrate a little bit higher and you know you can bring it down, it should be fine. To be fair, Sound ID uh, reference, their application has that built in and it'll automatically do that to keep from clipping. So you just have to do that manually. I'm sure that's easily fixable in a uh, software or firmware update by Aurea. So I might actually, I might actually, yeah, I'll pitch that idea to them and see what they say. So that's my video for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you have any questions about uh, Atmos hardware or um, like the, just the kind of the studio setup aspect of it, this would be a great video to comment on and ask those questions. I'm gonna be doing future videos on actually mixing in Atmos and kind of how to think about it because the format is a scalable format. It's not like 5.1 where you just have six audio files. It scales to the playback scenario. So it's really kind of cool and I'm excited to jump in. Make sure you guys stay tuned for that video. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a channel member, there's a, a Discord group where we have really good discussions about this kind of stuff. So you can join the channel as a member, get instant access to that. Uh, and uh, other than that, I guess I'll just see you guys next time. So take care. Bye.